In this example, we'll see how a rigid diaphragm distributes forces to the various seismic force resisting elements. We'll look at center of mass, we'll look at center of rigidity, and we'll see how these two concepts influence the distribution of forces. Shown here is a plan of our example building, very similar to what we use for flexible diaphragms. We've slightly changed the shear walls in the y direction. You can see the y direction right here. And we've added shear walls in the x direction. We'll name the shear wells according to the line that they're on. So this is shear wall A, B, C, D, shear wall 1, and these are already labeled 2AB and 2CD. The basic definition of center of mass is given in the book, and this is also given in statics and strength of materials classes. It's the sum of the product of the individual centroid and area of all the subareas divided by the total area. Let's calculate the center of mass for this diaphragm. We've divided the diaphragm into three different regions, A1, A2, A3. The individual areas are given here. For instance, area A1 is 30 by 30, as is area A3. Area A2 is 15 by 20. The individual centroids for the areas are right here, here, and here, with coordinates from the origin given in these two columns. So for instance, area 2 has a centroid that is 10 feet in this direction and 37 and a half feet in the other direction. We then calculate the products of area times centroid in the x direction, area times centroid in the y direction, and that's sufficient to calculate the location of our center of mass. Using the equations above, these sums right here and this sum right here, we get the following values for our center of mass. Our center of mass is located right here. This is approximately 14 feet in the y direction and 37 and a half feet in the x direction. The 37 and a half feet we could have determined by inspection because the diaphragm is symmetric in this direction. One last item to note, for simplicity, I haven't shown any units in any of my calculations, but in this example, all calculations are in kips and feet. Let's move on now to center of rigidity, which is a new concept. I'm indicating the same floor plan with the location of the center of mass that we already calculated. Let's first remind ourselves about the definition of rigidity. Previously in the course, we saw the following expression for rigidity for a cantilevered wall segment. Because the term D is used elsewhere in this video, I'll be using L in the section for rigidity. We have basically two walls here. We have 10 foot long walls and 20 foot long walls. We're assuming a height of nine feet. This wasn't given before, this is given here. Different lengths for each of these allows us to plug into this equation and calculate these two rigidities here. One thing that should jump out at you is that a 20 foot wall is much more rigid than a 10 foot wall. It's not twice as rigid and this will influence how much force it's going to attract. The center of rigidity is given in the text as follows. It's very similar to the center of mass but instead of using areas as the weighting factors we use rigidities. So the center of rigidity in the x direction has to do with distances in the x direction. For instance, how far is this wall in the x direction? And rigidities in the y direction. So what matters is what is the rigidity of this wall in the direction shown. Let's now calculate the location of the center of rigidity. First, we'll look at the center of rigidity in the x direction. So the walls that are relevant here are the walls that are oriented in the y direction, or walls A, B, C, and D. I listed the links here solely for the purpose of being able to identify which of the values of rigidity is applicable to each wall. We now list the location of the wall in the x direction. So wall A is at x equals 0. Wall B is at x is equal to 30. Wall C is at x is equal to 45. And wall D is that x is equal to 75. So we list these right here. Multiply the rigidity times x, add up all the rigidities, add up the rigidity times the location, use this equation right here, and we get the value of the x-coordinate of the center of rigidity. Similarly, we can calculate the y-coordinate of the center of rigidity. The relevant walls here are the ones that are oriented in the x direction, namely walls 1, a, B, and C, D. Again, I've listed the link solely to be able to identify which rigidity is relevant here. And we identify the location of these walls in the Y direction. Wall 1 is at Y is equal to 0. Walls 2, A, B, and 2, C, D are at Y is equal to 20 over here. Multiply the rigidity times the location to get these values. 
compute the sums. And with this equation and these values in the sums, we get the y-coordinate for the center of rigidity. Now let's interpret the center of rigidity. First, we can locate it on the diaphragm. So we see that the center of rigidity is at 37.5 in the x direction, and we could have noticed that by symmetry, same as the center of mass. It's 7.58 feet away from line one, and we'll recall down here, the center of mass was at 14.29. The difference between these two is the eccentricity, and we'll use this information later. I've highlighted two more columns here. The term D is the distance of each wall now from the center of rigidity. So for instance, wall A is going to be 37.5 feet in the negative direction from the center of rigidity. And the same calculation is performed for all the different walls. The other new column has to do with the contribution of each wall to resisting shear. And the basic theory behind rigid diaphragms is that the seismic force resisting system resists shear in proportion to its rigidity. And so this last column, VI, the shear in each SFRS, divided by V, the total shear, is given by the rigidity divided by the total rigidity. We can see that the 20-foot walls take each 38% of the shear, whereas the 10-foot walls each take 12% of the shear in the x direction. In the y direction, the 20-foot wall takes 62% of the shear. This ends the discussion on center of rigidity, and next we'll move on to see how the location of center of rigidity, how the location of center of mass, influence the distribution of forces.